Each of these prints have been a tool for engagement, to interrogate history, to reach for the future, and sometimes just to dazzle. The need for them came in the 1970s, when art world eyes were elsewhere. And there was not a lot of institutional support for people of color back in 1971. So in 1972, Alan Edmonds founded the Brandywine Workshop and Archives, an art collective originally based in a Philadelphia garage. What was the intention there? We decided that there needed to be an institution that could provide that bridge between your aspiration as a young person thinking about a career in art and it actually creating a path for them. So it was about providing role models. And a place where artists could come, as they do today, for a two-week workshop to try their hand at printmaking. Fifty years and some 500 prints later, Brandywine artworks are ensconced in an ever-expanding number of major museum collections, including here at the Harvard Art Museums. What does that do? What does that represent? To be honest with you, we never envisioned that we would be at Harvard Art Museum with an exhibition. We never envisioned that. But what we did envision, that if we kept to inclusion as a part of the issue of quality, that at some point it would manifest itself into wider recognition outside of Philadelphia. Harvard acquired this collection in 2018. It's a mix of famous names like Faith Ringgold and Sam Gilliam, but also of artists dressing down history or conversing with cosmology. They are sculptors or painters or weavers, challenged to stretch their skills by making prints. Elizabeth Rudy is the show's co-curator. You see artists doing totally new things in, in their careers or, and in their approach to art, which is exciting. Conceptual artist Hank Willis Thomas made this print titled To Be Sold, juxtaposing high-earning black athletes and performers with a recreation of an advertisement for the sale of enslaved people. Thomas appears a second time in the show, in the belly of his mother, photographer and scholar Deborah Willis. She wanted to use some old film of herself pregnant when she was at Yale, and she was discriminated against, and she was told by a professor when she entered a classroom as as a pregnant woman, she was told, you're taking up space for a good man. And she separated those words out over her image of herself pregnant with her son, who turned out to be another (laughs) really famous artist, Hank Willis Thomas. Artist Cedric Huckabee made more than 100 prints at Brandywine after watching the Occupy Wall Street movement sweep through the country and newfound attention paid to the 99%. But I felt like the 99% in my community really wasn't getting heard. So in Fort Worth, Texas, Huckabee's hometown, he began creating portraits, random people he encountered on any given day. And as he captured them, he rendered bits of their conversation into the portrait. Some people are more talkative, some people less. And my eye is always just open to um, trying to get a sense of the person. You said at the outset you wanted to explore who the 99% were. And maybe it was a rhetorical question, but did you come away with a a more fundamental understanding uh, and answer to that question? I don't know if it was a question as much as it was an attempt to hear people better. And a lot of times when you're painting from life, you're sort of metaphorically listening to the person. But in this case, not only was I looking and responding, but I also literally was listening to them. And I think it it ultimately made me more sensitive to, to um, the role of listening as a part of my art form. Especially knowing the prints would be distributed widely. One of the central tenets of Brandywine is that it's a place of ongoing communication with arts audiences, of charting a course through history, sometimes literally, as we find in a print by Alan Edmonds himself. It's called 200 Years and features President Barack Obama atop a heap of history. And everything else is at the bottom, the slave ship, the arrival, the manifest change. Uh, And then throughout, there's names of people who I felt Obama embodied the writers, the orators, the lawyers, the educators, the community workers, all the names that came before Obama for which if they didn't, there wouldn't have been an Obama. He's the summation of all those 200 years of making progress. And for one full quarter of it, Brandywine has been there to reflect it.